Recently, I've started working with Unreal Engine 5.4's new motion design tools. In this video, I'm going to walk through my process for setting up a project. Of course, the first thing we're going to need to do is open up Unreal Engine. If you're familiar with Unreal Engine, you know this takes a little bit of time. From the project browser, I'm going to select Film Video and Live Events. Click on that, and then I'm going to go to a blank project. You also have the options to add starter content if you'd like that available and ray tracing lighting. You'll need to name the project and also make sure you know where the project is located. From there, hit the Create button. As of Unreal Engine 5.4, Motion Design is still considered an experimental plugin. We will need to activate that plugin each time we want to start a Motion Design project. Go up to Settings in the upper right hand corner, open that up, and go to Plugins. Once the plugin dialog box opens up, you'll need to search for Motion Design. You'll see there the option for that plugin. Click it, hit yes, and then restart the engine. It'll take a minute for the engine to restart. Once Unreal Engine has loaded the project, we're going to go up to the upper left hand corner, go to Selection Mode, click on that drop down menu, and now you'll see the option at the bottom for Motion Design. Select that. Now move to the right and you'll see the Motion Design button. This will create a Motion Design scene. In the Motion Design Outliner, you'll see that all of the objects in the scene are listed. I'm going to select all of them except for the floor and delete them. We will replace many of those actors by clicking on Create Defaults. You'll see in there that we have a default scene route, a directional light, skylight, post-process volume, and a cine camera. Click Spawn. All of those actors are now listed in the Motion Design Outliner. The floor is still in the scene. I'm going to select it in the Outliner, and now I can see its outline in the viewer. I'm going to grab that and bring it down just a little bit so that we can see the floor. Now select the Post Process Volume, and we're going to make a change to the Exposure Settings. Under the Exposure tab, let's select Metering Mode, select the checkbox to Metering Mode, and let's change that to Manual and set the exposure compensation to 9. In the viewer, let's go to Lit, drop down to Game Settings, and deselect that. Now let's go up to Camera, and we'll drop down to Ruler Override, and we'll select 1920 by 1080. That sets up our ruler so that it is set at a resolution of 1920 by 1080. You'll see that in the upper left-hand corner of the viewer now, the ruler will start out at 0, Go to the right to 1920, and again from zero at the top down to the bottom to 1080. To the far left, you'll see our options for 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and actors. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and drop a rectangle in. I've selected the rectangle, and in the Details tab, I'm going to take a look at the shape properties. You'll see that the size type is set to Unreal Units. The size of this rectangle right now is 100 by 100 Unreal Units. If we select that and choose Pixel, you'll see that it's now 192 pixels by 192. In the Mesh Size options, I'm going to change from XY being constrained to them being free, and I'm going to set that to 1920 by 1080. Let me hide the floor, and you'll see now that that rectangle covers 1920 by 1080, the size of the scene. This is definitely a personal preference of mine. At the bottom of the viewer are a number of options that affect the viewer and the way that you interact with the viewer. These are definitely personal preferences, but I like to turn off the grids and the snapping. I'll leave the viewport overlay visibility on. The dark areas either to the left and right or top and bottom are the areas that we will not see in the final render. From this point, things are pretty much ready to go to start working with the 2D shapes, the 3D shapes, and the actors to build out your design. I hope this has been helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe and look for more content on Unreal Engine's motion design.